Hello, hello everybody. This is 3B once again. I uh, just want to say a quick thank you to everyone who watched and commented on the videos on YouTube. Um, I didn't expect so many people to watch the videos or to actually like them. So that was a quite nice, quite a nice surprise. Okay, this is just a quick video to show you guys a few things and to answer some of the questions that uh, that came up in the forums. Okay, I can't answer all the questions, guys. Uh, but let's let's get started, okay? All right. All right. So this is this is just a quick basic map. All right. Someone was asking if the enemy leaders were always random or if you had the ability to choose. Okay. I remember reading that. So we'll have a look at that. You can go completely random, or you can customize humans, customize every leader that you want. Uh, select only humans. I mean, select only human players, or select all the players, right? So we're going to go with um, customize all, just to show you how this works, okay? Now, someone was asking about orcs and sorcerers, so here's one I made earlier, okay? So I'm going to be using her, an orc sorcerer, okay? Next one is going to be oh, already done. A high elf sorcerer. There's going to be some sorcerer magic here. And another orc sorcerer. Actually, you know what? Let's make him a dwarf sorcerer. Uh, why not? Uh, customize new. Goblin. Dwarf. Done. Do we want another dreadnought? I, I know a lot of you guys were saying enough with the dreadnoughts. Okay. Let's go with another sorcerer. Uh, we've got a human already. No, we've got an elf, a dwarf, an orc. This sounds like a really bad joke, and they walk into a bar. Okay, let's go with a goblin. Why not? Done. Yeah, okay. This comes up, guys, because whoever... Yeah, someone's already picked purple, basically, so we just go with your random colors. And the game starts. You've got four sorcerers in there. I'm an orc sorcerer. Okay. Your rise to power begins. Right now, guys, I'm a sorcerer. Uh, magic, that's my thing, okay? Uh, theocrat, more about the, the empire-wide buffs. Uh, also, warlord, who we can't really look at in detail today. They get some awesome empire buffs. Okay, first thing I want you guys to see, with the sorcerer, look at your casting points. Every player starts with the default 20 casting points. As a sorcerer, you get that extra five, okay? Because you're a channeler. Right, those are... Alright, I've got harmonizing energy. Right, someone was asking about the healing spells. This is the healing spell that the sorcerer gets. It's not the most efficient healing spell there is. If you want to get very efficient with your healing, you need to go either as a theocrat or you need to pick creation adept. Okay, and I'll show you why. If you go creation adept, which would be under skills, uh, all types, go to creation 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 adept you get holy cure 25 hp for 10 mana instead of 30 hp for 20 mana okay right uh, a hero offers to join a dreadnought okay yep we'll, we'll, we'll take you Okay, so um, someone was asking, yeah, what, what orcs are like. Uh, right. I think it's best if I bring up the Term of Wonders, click on Units, click on Orc, and click on Other, and you get these are the base orc units. I've arranged them by tier there, so you can see what they are. All right. Okay, basic infantry, basic pikemen, basic archer. Right, I want you guys to notice something here. Shoot short bow. Six, okay? These guys are not the world's best marksmen, okay? But they do inflict bleeding wounds. Okay, if you want to have a quick comparison to an elf, who are the world's best marksmen, 
okay shoot longbow three extra damage already and they don't get that uh, that range distance penalty so in a one-on-one -on -one fight who's gonna win that one I think that's quite obvious uh, okay. let's go back to the orcs okay this is your irregular unit oh yeah one last thing have a look at this All right look at his damage look at his health okay 45 HP 13 damage that's a tier 1 unit let's compare it to a human okay long swordsman less damage less health less damage less health okay uh, as that goes up guys what you want to be thinking about if you do choose to play orc is every class every orc whatever class they go with every orc will do a little bit extra damage and have a little bit extra HP so let, let's go through this again let's let's go back to the black knight in my opinion guys these are the best cavalry at tier 2 in the game now why do I say that okay you might look at the cost and go whoa 110 gold what's going on when you get to uh, a human he only costs 90 gold what is the justification for that extra 20 gold right 50 HP 12 defense 9 resistance and 12 damage Let's go back to the Orc, the Black Knight. Extra defense, less resistance, uh, no, extra damage rather. Uh, extra damage, less resistance. Okay, and he's got 12 defense. And a human also has 12 defense. Okay, he's got extra HP, but here's, here's his standout skill, polearm on cavalry right that basically makes it in effect a really fast moving pikeman plus five damage against mounted and flying units that 13 damage is now 18 damage if you are fighting anything on a horse or a beetle or on a manticore or whatever mount there is okay so bear that in mind 18 damage let's go get that human again 18 damage against that, 12 defense, 1 on 1 fight, I know who's going to win that one. That's going to be the Black Knight all the way. Okay, back to the Orc. Uh, priest, throw curse, poison bolts, average melee strike, uh, average for a support unit. This is a standout skill, throw curse. This debuffs the enemy and this can be used from quite a long range. Okay. Yeah. and then you got your poison bolts all right I'm gonna see if I can start a fight somewhere have I got yes I do I have an orc priest just to show you how throw curse works that's probably not the best fight because those are quite strong let's see if we can clear a mine yes we can okay orcs do not understand the word mercy let's go manual combat If you press F, you go in and out, and in and out. Okay, where is it? All right, look at this. What we got there? All right, remember he's in guard right now. Okay. Throw curse tells you what the likelihood is of it working. Now, why I like this, why I really like this, is that even if the throw curse fails, its secondary effect is going to reduce the target's movement. That means you can manipulate the target's movement along the battlefield. Win win, as far as I'm concerned. Let's just check something. How far are they going to move anyway? Okay. Let's, uh, let's use it. 40%? Yeah, okay, let's go with that. Resisted. Right, now look at his movement. Right, yeah, he's not really going anywhere. Okay? He's far away. That means he's open to being killed. Let's double check that. Yep. Do I have, what do I have, harmonizing energy, what has he got, flashbang, ooh, 
if you watched the last video you can remember I had a slight issue with not knowing how blind worked well I know for sure blind is going to work on these guys blinded for two turns what does that mean throw stones click on that that's his range that's his effective range okay I mean he's not really doing anything or going anywhere uh, he's at my mercy uh -huh. ah let's just kill him anyway okay we'll move you up there can I? I really should have checked that yep no nope, I'm fine I'm safe and yep bring you there okay And enter. So you now I've got the decision here. What, what, how do I want to do this? Obviously, I want to get as uh, bloodless a victory as possible. So I think if I do that, nah. Let's uh, let's do that. So I know I'm going to get at least at least ten damage. So that's twelve damage. Okay. Now if you notice, guys, they're on guard. So even if uh, even though he can go behind them, he, he's not going to flank. Okay. Right. First strike counts as first strike something that I need to think about so when I go to attack these that's my unit of choice okay right, you can move one closer I don't know if they make a difference right it's not great but every little helps right so if you look at that three times resisted bleeding wounds why because he's a dwarf he's got high resistance uh -huh. right there's a chance yeah, I can I can absorb that damage. That's fine. Yeah, in some ways it's actually quite a good matchup because uh, dwarves, orcs. Okay. Let's move you out of the danger zone. And here it is. As good as new! I can tell you from experience when your opponent does that in multiplayer, it's incredibly annoying. But in a good way! <laughs> okay, and... Uh, yeah, we'll put them there. Just in case he has any ideas of trying to get my archers. Right, okay, and end turn. <laughs> really doesn't like him and yeah you're gone one two three bye bye okay guys that just gives you an indication of what you're looking to do with an orc you know you really want to close the distance get stuck in there um, you know behind your front lines you want to be using your razor bows to try and get them to be bleeding and you want to be using your orc priest Dwarven city. <laughs> You're going to be using your priest to debuff the enemy and try and control the flow of battle just a little bit. Okay? Um, right, I think times we've got time for one more question. Right, okay. Mounts available for heroes. Is that available to research? Invoke extraordinary mount. Yes. Okay, we'll start with that. Okay? Basically, guys, you... If you remember from the last video I did, I picked up a couple of mounts. I think uh, I picked up a Blight Tusk Boar. Uh, you can pick up several mounts from treasure sites, okay? But these are not the only mounts available. The Sorcerer gets Invoke Extraordinary Mount, which is what is now being researched over there, okay? Summons a random egg that contains a mount. The egg will come, and it is pretty random. Uh, it's usually something like... Um, a wyvern egg or something like that okay 
and then you need to babysit it or incubate it or whatever you want to call it for 10 turns and then it's yours okay whatever that mount is is now yours uh, yeah okay uh, so that's the orcs that we've done what the mounts available sorcerer spells I'm going to give you guys a quick quick overview in the term of wonders show you guys what spells are available to a sorcerer all the spells that you get uh, let's start with combat Combat spells and where are you? Sorcerer. Let's organize them by tier. Okay, Magic Fist. I'm sure you guys remember this one. Star Blades. Yep. Sphere of Protection. Now this one is a potential battle winner. Okay. You use this on the right unit at that right time and it's going to mitigate physical damage by 80%. Um, put that into perspective, let's, uh, let's take a unit, uh, there we go, Black Knight, he deals 13 damage, right? You put that spell on a unit and then attack the Black Knight, that means that 13 damage is going to be 4 damage or 3 damage, something like that, okay? Maths is not my strong point. Okay, let's bring that back up. Double gravity. Well, no, oh, come on, sort it by tier. There we go. Harmonizing energy, we've just seen that one. Arcane binding. Now, the sorcerer is the only one who gets this particular spell, okay? Um, this makes him very dangerous, especially if he's playing against a druid, because, you know, he's going to have a chance to take over an enemy summoned unit. And if it doesn't take it over, it's going to have its movement. Okay, again, it's, it's that idea of controlling the battlefield. Right, Chain Lightning. If you're lucky enough to have an enemy who puts all his units together, this is going to do some damage to every single unit. The price isn't that much. Okay, I start with 25 mana. It costs 25 mana. By the time I research this, I'm probably going to have, you know, it's, it's quite easily done by about sort of turn 25, 30, 50 casting points. Uses twice in one battle, that's good. Um, same again, this is cheaper and this is a little bit more varied. Cosmic Spray, okay. Static Sphere, I think you guys, you probably remember this from the last games, okay. Basically it turns your unit into a version of a Wisp. Very dangerous, right. You park it in a particular place and then can you imagine if you uh, put the Sphere of Protection on top of it. So anyone who attacks it is going to do minimal damage. And then it's going to get stunned. Again, it's all about controlling that battlefield, right? Mass stasis. That's what it does. Okay. Basically, it means every unit on the battlefield is going to move less. It might move uh, not at all, or it might move just a little bit. But either way, it's going to move less. Okay. Double gravity. That reduces flyers. It just makes them walkers again. Okay. Um, Static electricity, this is, uh, this is a good one, this is useful, okay, if you could combine static electricity, or it does combine it with static shield, every enemy unit is going to have an automatic minus 20% weakness, okay, and every one of your units is going to have extra 5 shock damage and a chance to stun the enemy, and my personal favorite, Chaos Rift. Alright, I might be able, guys, um, you know, with this game, if, we, if I record, you know, I might be able to get this game to, like, mid-late game and then have the Chaos Rift ready for the next video so I can just show you what it, how it works in battle, okay? Those are the combat spells. Right, quick look at the global spells. Okay, your summons. You got Wisp, okay? If you have a Wisp, you then unlock the chance to produce an apprentice, okay? Where are you? That, does that, that, that comes under Empire Upgrades. Okay? Produce Apprentice. That's what an Apprentice does. Okay? A single Apprentice isn't going to really cause anyone, anywhere, any problems. Two or three, however, are going to be useful. And now, notice Steel Enchantment. Anyone who's thinking, alright, okay, you know what, I'm going to buff my units. I'm thinking about Theocrat here. Right, I'm going to buff my units, I'm going to put extra resist, I'm going to do all this, I'm going to do all that. These get stolen, you're in trouble. Right, let's go back to the global spells. Uh, where are we? 
Phantasm Warrior, right, which will then unlock Summon Fantastic Creature. Okay, I'm a fantastic creature. Okay, you'll notice that it doesn't tell you what creature. That's because it is a random fantastic creature. This tends to be your wyverns, your wild griffins, your cockatrices. Those are your fantastic creatures. Okay, so you know it's not a it's not a precision spell. You summon it and hope that you get something that's going to be interesting. And some are better, and some are worse. It depends what you, what you're looking to do. All right, and then your then next one will be summon the node serpent okay and then everybody's favorite the eldritch horror well, i can tell you from experience facing one of these that's not cool all right especially because if i'm not wrong this is the only unit in the whole game that has dominate and dominate starts at 13 resistance all right you've seen that not many units have 13 resistance okay so basically yeah, this is not a unit you want to be fighting if you can help it. Okay, they're not invincible. None of these units are invincible, guys. Um, they're just really, really tough. Right. Okay. And Empire upgrades for the Sorcerer. What have we got? Sorcerer 1, 2, 7. Look at that, guys. Empire upgrades. Apart from the Sorcery, which gives you extra casting points, you'll notice immediately that you don't have that many. Alright? Uh, give you a quick comparison let's have a look look what the theocrat gets yeah that just shows you what you're looking at I mean it's not much more but it is more okay what is the uh, warlord which I can't show you see what the dreadnought look at the dreadnought okay does that show you the, the indication of what certain classes are going to be focusing on as opposed to other classes all right guys um, there are many other questions here. I want to answer the last one. The strongest T4 unit. That's not a question you can really answer. Okay. Um, it all depends what you're doing. It all depends how you manage to manipulate the battlefield. If you bring up the Eldritch Horror again. Okay. Eldritch Horror. It's powerful on its own. If you combine that with Math Stasis, which makes everyone have that little bit extra, was it 20% extra shock weakness? That shock breath, right, that's now 24 damage, okay? And that's a useful attack, okay? Um, look at his melee, it's all strong, it's all strong, it's all wonderful, all right? This is a strong unit, uh, you could argue. I mean, are we, are we talking about one and one? Are we talking about groups of unit or, or what? I mean, if you take the Dreadnought and go for Empire Upgrades... Where are you? Produce, 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 produce. What am I looking for? Uh, juggernaut. I always want to call it the land ship. Look at that. That's some serious damage as well, guys. I mean, it, it's a hard question to answer. What is the strongest? Can't tell you, but I can tell you what my favorite is. And that would probably be the Horned God. For me personally guys, this is just the best all rounder unit. Okay, he doesn't float, he doesn't fly, but he does walk quite a long way. He has call lightning, which is an extra is it ex extreme range, yeah, extreme range attack. Um, he can swim and he can yeah, he can walk equally well on everything. He just can't fly. That's it. It's not you know, but for that movement I think it's pretty good. And he's tough. He's tough, he's tough. And um T three unit right okay i'm assuming this meant racial units guys what is the strongest one again guys this is a hard one to it's a hard one because it's all about how you use them and you can't take them in isolation i mean it's how you're going to manipulate them basically but let's go and i'll give you a quick overview of all the ones we'll start with who's first in this we'll start with high elf Griffin Rider flies and is quite cheap, relatively speaking, compared to the rest, right? He doesn't have any outstanding abilities except he flies and he's got first strike and he charges, okay? So if you manage to get all of these working together, you can fly over the enemy line, stab him in the back, still using your charge, and when the enemy comes to attack you, you're going to hit them first, okay? Human human knight all right have a look at that guys 
again, this is, this is, you know, he's armoured, he has a shield, which means that plus two, plus two, attacks from the front, that 13 defence is really 17 defence, decent damage, decent resistance, he's fast, he's got some HP, and he charges, okay? Nothing to complain about. Uh, I'm going to save the orc for last. Okay, Goblin Big Beetle. On the face of it, he doesn't look very different to a knight. Okay. Except he's immune to poison and he has Overwhelm. Okay, so that means plus three damage to anything with a shield. At 14, right? If he's fighting a knight, that now becomes 17. Okay? So it's pretty useful. I mean, who would win between those two? I'm not that sure. But he gets wall crushing and the knight doesn't get that. I mean, in an open battle, I probably put my money on the knight. Um, if you're trying to take, um, if you're trying to take a city, I'd say a Griffin Rider or a Flyer is your best bet. Um, if you want something that's a little bit cheaper, I'd say you, you go with the Goblin Big Beetle. Okay. And uh, what have we got next? Talking about. Oh yeah, here we go. I do like this unit a lot. Okay. Look at his HP. Look at his defense. Look at his, his resistance. Okay. He's good at everything. He's armoured as well, so he's got, in effect, uh, 16 defence. It's almost as good as the knight. Fire protection, spirit protection. This is a unit that is tailor-made to take out the Shrine of Smiting. Okay? Walks on lava, walks on mountains, kills dragons, kills giants. He does have one weakness, though. He is the slowest of the Tier 3 units. Okay? Dwarves, in general, guys, are... Um, they're tough, you know, they're, they're tough, they've got loads of HP, loads of defense, loads of resistance, good damage, but they are the slowest, usually. This is a Dwarf Boar Rider, slowest of all the cavalry. Okay, a Draconian Flyer. Alright, he flies and he's got Overwhelm. Okay, so against 9, that's going to be 19 damage, and if he can uh, get a charge in, that's going to be 25 damage against 9. Um, of course, if he can can flank them or backstab which he can do fairly easily because he can just fly over the knight you can see where I'm going with it quite a versatile useful unit um, on the battlefield doesn't have any outstanding crazy abilities except fast healing but when you look at how many HP he's got at plus six you know on top of the base plus six it makes a difference but at that level you you know you're not going to be too worried about that Okay, let's go back to the Orcs. We started with the Orcs, we're going to end with the Orcs. This is your Shock Trooper. Okay. I think this is one of the best units in the game. Okay. He has good HP, decent movement, excellent defense, amazing attack, and he has one incredible weakness. Look at his resistance. Okay. That's only nine. All right. Remember the Eldritch Horror can dominate starting at 13, which means his chance to dominate is going to be something like 70% or something when he goes up against a Shock Trooper, okay? But why are these guys useful? Well, if you haven't got something that's going to dominate or charm or convert or entangle the Shock Trooper, if you let this close with your own infantry, for example, you're going to be in deep, deep trouble, okay? Overwhelm. Anything you have with a shield or a pike, that's going down fast. And they're armoured, okay? So in effect, 15 defence. Tireless, okay? I don't think we've seen this one. What does it mean, tireless? Well, when you attack someone in a tactical battle, you take out their, their movement. You soak their movement when you make them retaliate. Well, a shock trooper can retaliate, and when he starts his turn, he's got all his movement. So that's not going to work. So basically, think of it as they're going to attack you, and they're going to keep attacking you, and keep attacking you, okay? And also here, if you look at this, inflict bleeding wounds, we've seen this before earlier with the all crazy bow. Okay, the idea is, he hits you, right, you hit back, he hits you, but every time that your unit starts against it, it's losing, it's losing HP already, okay? So, you know, against other tier 3 units, one on one, if you play to the short trooper strengths, which is just trading blows, then you're probably going to lose. So if I have to say the strongest T3 unit, I would probably say the short trooper. It's not my favorite though. My favorite is the Griffin Rider. Right guys, on that note, I'm going to end this because we are running out of time. Um, 
Many other questions? Maybe I'll do another Let's Play. That's, uh, well, not really a Let's Play, but thank you for watching, and as always, do you want... As always, I do welcome your constructive feedback, okay?